guess what happens when our horses get injured? We have to take care of them. Even after a long day of chemistry homework and it's really late at night, we still have to take care of them. Today, we're gonna to show you exactly how we do that. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Hi, my name is Kylie, and this here is Rose. And I'm Ashley. And today, I'm going to show you how I clean out Rose's wound. So here, she got a wound a couple weeks ago and it got infected, so we've been having to treat it. Um, we talked to the vet and he's been telling us exactly what to do and we've been following his instructions. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. So the first step to caring for any wound, whether it be infected or not, is to keep it clean and to keep flies away from it. That's very important with horses because flies are everywhere. Yes, and so I, how I'm going to clean this out is I'm going to first rinse it off and then I'm going to use a metal curry comb to get all of this drainage off of her leg. That's just how I'm going to start. That way I have a clean, I can see exactly how much her wound has improved and see exactly what I need to do. So I'll start by doing that. So the first thing that Kylie does when she's cleaning out Rose's leg is she takes a metal curry comb, which is a brush that we normally use when cleaning our horses just to get off if it's in the winter time, any mud, any hair that's coming out. It's a really great tool for when your horse is excessively dirty or you have an excessive amount of dirt and gunk to get off. So it's perfect for removing the pus and any amount of drainage that might be coming out of that wound off of Rose's leg. So she's gonna, she wets it down so that it at least starts to loosen and starts to kind of slough off. And then she uses the metal curry and picks away at the remainder of everything stuck there because even though it's not hurting her now, and having that down her leg, it looks bad, but it's not really causing an issue for her. But over time, if we leave that amount of gunk stuck to her, one, it's just gonna build up and build up and build up and get worse and worse. And two, it's actually going to attract, I mean, we've seen wasps and all kinds of flies to her leg, which then are going to be irritating the wound itself. So it's more of a secondary issue having all of that gunk. One, looks way cleaner and more presentable when it's clean and two, it's keeping any kind of insects from being attracted to that area and really causing an issue for the wound. So the hosing and the curry combing are the first step that she does in order just to get the big stuff off, all the big gross stuff off of Rose's leg so that then she can get a little more technical and a little more targeted and actually clean the wound itself. So now that her leg is nice and clean, I'm actually gonna clean out the wound itself. I'll start by just lightly pushing on the wound, just above the wound and seeing if anything comes out. If it does, that's fine. It's better to get less than more. In the beginning, I was getting so much stuff coming out, it was insane. Um, and then I'll take, I'm gonna use water today, but back when it was really big and really inflamed, I would use a chlorhexidine solution, which is just chlorhexidine and water. But today I'm just gonna use water and I'm going to find the open spot of her wound and I'm just going to stick this up there and push some water up there and I'm flushing out the wound here so hopefully some stuff will come out but now that it's healing it's actually really good that not much is coming out. So we flush out wounds in order to clear any pockets that are deep in there if the wound happens to be off to the side of where the actual opening is, you can end up with a pocket of pus and just other gross, disgusting things that are gonna sit in there and not come out because the drainage hole of the wound is above the area where the infection or where any pus or drainage might be lying. So going in there with something like a syringe and some chlorhexidine solution, which is a, a, an antiseptic, a disinfectant, they use it a lot in surgical settings. 
Um, we dilute it because actually in really intense concentrations, it can burn flesh and cause the opposite of healing, <laughs> which is not helpful in a situation like this. But diluted, it'll kill off any bad bacteria, which is then going to allow the wound to heal from the inside out. So we shoot that chlorhexane all up and around in there so that we know that it's coated all on the inside with a disinfectant solution that's going to help take down the infection. Um, whereas cleaning it just from the outside, we're not going to get the same effect. That, you know, we've now treated it externally, but if we can get internal and clear out any pockets, that's going to be super helpful for healing long term. And what Kylie has noticed is when she first started flushing it, I mean, she could get her whole finger, like, up into there, all the way to her, I guess that's her second knuckle. I mean, she had a lot of space up in there and wiggle it around. There's just this huge pocket where that pus and inflammation was sitting, which is really what was causing Rose the pain, was having that pressure there, less so than the wound itself. But when it was that large, it was very important for her to flush it. Now she's flushing it less often, and she's just using water to clear it out, see what's in there sort of thing, not a fluorhexidine solution. And now the distance that she can put her syringe, or, or her finger, but mostly her syringe, into the wound itself is much, much, much smaller, which should, does go to show us it's healing from the inside, the tissue's starting to be a little bit healthier again, we're not burning any of the tissue, and the infection's going down, which are all awesome signs. So one issue that Kylie did run into with Rose at the beginning, and that different horses, it's really just sort of a, some horses are more predisposed to it than others, but an issue that clearly Rose is predisposed to is something called proud flesh, which is basically a buildup of tissue inside of a wound, uh, so in the opening. So it's not a skin issue, it's something that actually grows from the tissue inside. It's a buildup of scar and otherwise just tissue <laughs> that starts to build up inside of a wound and actually will bubble up inside so that then the skin cannot close around it. So you've got this big old ball of tissue growing inside of your wound. <laughs> I know, that sounds disgusting, but how is your skin ever going to close together if it's got something, you know, it, it can be something humongous. Some horses will get giant, you know, softball size pieces of proud flesh growing inside of their wound. So Rose's was much smaller, and Kylie, of course, she was being so diligent with her care, caught it immediately with Rose when it started to be a little bit of a proud flesh sort of situation. It started to extend past the line of the skin. So with the proud flesh that Rose was experiencing, because it was caught early and because Kylie was very diligent in her care of Rose's leg, we were able to treat it with something called ichthymol, which is an ointment that we really don't want to put on our skin unless we're having a proud flesh issue, which is not something people really do, but is really great for taking down the proud flesh and getting it, basically just getting it out of the way so that the wound can close around it. So what Kylie's doing now is actually what's called applying a standing bandage so we use polo wraps, which we've talked about in the past as being a type of horse boot. If you want to learn more about polo wraps specifically, we have a video all about horse boots. But this is a way of using a polo wrap and also a standing bandage, which is the white portion of the wrap that she's applying now, to help apply pressure evenly to the horse's leg in order to prevent, like people will use it for swelling, or if your horse has some kind of an injury on their forearm or on this cannon bone area, it can just prevent that from being chafed or rubbed or broken open. But for the most people, most part, po the, 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 the. but for the most part, people use it for support. And in her case, Kylie started wrapping her legs back when her injury was really, really infected and really swollen, and Rose was really not wanting to put weight on the leg. And so what she had started to do was instead of placing her foot down and just not standing on it, she was just rolling her leg under. And what we can see with horses that start standing a little weirdly is that they'll actually cause issues in other limbs or back soreness or things like that or other injuries because they're not using their body the way it was intended to be used. They're very, very large animals. She's not fat, but she still weighs about a thousand pounds and they're standing basically on four stilts. So to provide a little bit of support and to help keep the inflammation down. So when Kylie first started wrapping it like this, the inflammation went down dramatically and she started using that leg more the way that she's supposed to be, which is going to prevent her from hurting herself. But the wrap has this pillowy white part underneath, which is the standing bandage or the standing wrap, and that just helps spread the pressure from the polo wrap, which is this green piece, more evenly. And if you want to learn more about wrapping polo wraps, of course, go check out that horse boot video. That's more uh, in relation to horses that are being ridden in these boots. This is a slight variation of a polo wrap but it's the same concept and it's just to keep pressure there so that we don't get any kind of crazy swelling and to help provide support for her leg while she's healing from her injury. 
So a big thing when dealing with external wounds on horses are the flies, like we've mentioned. And part of the reason why her injury got infected in the first place is going to be because of flies. I mean, they're outside, you can't bring your horse inside your house to keep them bubble wrapped and clean. But the flies are huge vectors of not only disease, but just bacteria and germs that cause issues like a really infected leg wound that just became a much bigger issue than it had to because some flies got some dirt in there. So applying an ointment like what Kylie's using right now, which is called SWAT, or that's a brand name, there's other kinds of ointments, but basically a fly paste that helps keep the flies away, deters them from landing there, and is really sticky and gooey, so it's hard for the horse to get off, it doesn't rinse off in the water, it's very hard to get off of your hands. <laughs> also comes in pink, for those of you who would prefer to you know, stain your hands pink rather than clear. <laughs> But otherwise, it normally is colored so that you can see that it's still there. You can see if it's rinsed off if you need to apply more. But it's important to take this step after cleaning it and after flushing it and everything looks good and we're wrapped to keep the flies off of it. At nighttime, it's not as big of a deal. But during the day, there are flies everywhere here and it's as much as you can do just to keep as many as possible off. You're never going to be perfect, but keep as many as you can. Keep down the infection or chance of infection. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll keep you updated on how Rose does, and hopefully I'll be able to ride her again soon. If you enjoyed this video, we'd love to hear from you. Like and subscribe, and leave us a comment about what you'd like to see in future episodes. We'll see ya back on the ranch.